Welcome to the Community Shall Be Restored TV show. I'm your host, Prophet Cedric Banks, along with Councilman Scott Benson and Russ Balant. Prophetess Danetta Banks. And we have a great show for you today. We have a tremendous show for you today, right here. We have the Detroit City Councilman of the 3rd District right here, Councilman Scott Benson. We have the challenger right here who's been uh, a great competitor in this uh, 3rd District for many, many years. He's done, done some great things in the 3rd District, Russ Ballant. And we get ready to hear from these two uh, powerhouse candidates in the 3rd District right now. Councilman Scott Benson, we're going to get you to start everything mm -hmm. off. Uh, you, uh, you've been a Detroit City Councilman, 3rd District, over the last, what, four years, three and a half years, four years? Three years and nine months as of today. Okay, three years and nine months. All right, what have you, what have you done uh, in the 3rd District over the last three years and, not, three years and nine months, Councilman? Well, we know, number one, I want to thank you for this opportunity to talk about my platform, the accomplishments, and how we've been able to successfully bring resources back to the 3rd District. So over the last three years and nine months, we've been able to bring over $150 million of development to the 3rd District, over 1,000 jobs to the 3rd District, including Teamster positions, 250 at Link Logistics in the 3rd District. That's just to name a few. We've also been able to revitalize the fleets of our first responders, our police, our fire. We've been able to bring pay raises to our EMS, our police and our fire. We're trying to get those employees, as well as all the others, into a competitive level. And so that we'll stop seeing the brain drain of our police and our fire. When we train them, they stay for a few years and they go off to greener pastures. We need to become competitive. And we've been working on that and we've been successful. We've also been able to bring resources for blight elimination, been able to knock down over 2,000 homes here in the third district where when I started this job, there were gonna be no resources for the third district. So we fought and we worked to get those resources here. So this is some of the things that I've been able to do and to accomplish. And that was my platform. When I ran three years ago, three and a half, actually four years now, I said that I wanted to make sure that we did job creation, blight elimination, and public safety. In addition, I promised that we'd have a district office. And we were the first council district to have a district office fully staffed five days a week in their district, which we have today. We've been able to process over and help over 4,000 constituents during that timeline. Okay. And a direct result of that district office. All right, okay. Russ, what's going on in the community? What, 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 what's, uh, what type of accomplishments are you making in the community? What type of success are you having out there in the community? Well, uh, I was recently uh, put back on the Detroit Library Commission where I served six years from 2009 through 2015. Uh, and uh, during uh, this coming period, we're gonna be working on issues around remodeling the library branches. Uh, the Wilder branch in this district on Seven Mile is remodeled. The Franklin branch is next at uh, Six and Gratiot. And, but, um, to go back to, to my record, uh, in 2014, uh, I was one of the founding members of the Save Lipke Committee when, uh, when the council member was leading an effort to, and got a vote from city council to take Lipke Recreation Center and shut it down and declare it surplus property. That's untrue. That's, that's not correct. In uh, fact, in uh, January uh, of 2014, I is was this, the one is this, that is this brought how, how it's that going vote out? away. And this, so what you need to state factual information, Russ. Uh, and I, I, so I, I, the fact is oh. that that was up for a vote and I had it sent back to the administration but, because the community had let me know they did not want that to happen. So that was never a vote. So let's please make sure that we're stating let's, facts. Let's, let's, Councilman, let's let him finish. Okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure we're stating First facts. First of all, I will state it as a matter of fact that Council Member Benson and six other members of council voted to declare Lipke who, 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 who were these? Can, can, I mean, do you, you want, want to name them? Do you want to? Well, if that's the use you, of our time, I'd, no, I'd be happy well, to name them. You don't have to name them. You, have to name them. you don't have to name them. You don't have to name all, them. All of them who served at the time, except uh, Council President Brenda Jones and Raquel Castaneda Lopez from Southwest Detroit, voted to declare surplus property. 72 vote. And I'm, I'm happy to take it audio of him denying that he did this because it's well known in the Lipke area that he did what I just said. 
Um, and I was at city council every week fighting this issue. And he did not stop it. Mayor Duggan stopped it. After, after the city so council. So Mayor Duggan intervened in this, and when, they, right. when the council located, I mean, council yes. labeled this a surplus. That's right. And he held a meeting with our, with our uh, committee and began making the changes and stopping it at that time. He did, Mayor Duggan did not know, and no one had told him, that there were $350,000 sitting in a trust, DNR trust fund in Lansing waiting for the city to pick it up to do upgrades to the Lippy Recreation Center. And when he was told that, he looked at his staff and said, nobody ever told me this. He said, and that's when he started doing the, uh, the, the, the walk back and to, that saved Lipke. And when we had the planning committee to, to bring the current programs in, uh, it was only the mayor's office and the Save, Save Lipke committee, myself and three other uh, founding members and several other people who had joined our efforts who were part of those meetings. Uh, the council member wasn't part of that. That's one accomplishment. Um, I've been rescuing homes in my neighborhood uh, from abandonment and uh, uh, doing some fixes that are necessary to get people back in them and turning them into home, turning not as renters, but as uh, homeowners. And uh, they're, uh, uh, we're transferring uh, another deed this month to somebody who picked up a home that had been foreclosed and is now an occupant in the, in the neighborhood. I've been fighting the, uh, to keep people from losing their homes in the tax foreclosures. We've got several folks just in my block club area that are living in homes now because we intervened and rescued those homes. But you know, I'm also trying to address the, the bigger problem of not just my neighborhood, but the fact that in this district we have more water shutoffs we have more tax foreclosures and we've had more school closings than any other part of the city or anywhere else in the state of Michigan. Uh, I consider the water shutoffs indefensible because the, the cost of water in this city has gone up five by a factor of five since uh, 2005. And if you talk to the average resident, as I've been doing, and you ask them, uh, yeah, I, I tell them, my water bill was $48 every three months. Everyone nods, yeah, that was about what I was paying, $16 a month. We were billed every three months back then. And now we're paying $80. Some people are paying more than $80 a month. But from $16 a month, you know, for all the history of the water department, that's as high as it got. And now it's up to 80. That can't be defended. Uh, I, I'm a licensed water treatment operator for the city of Detroit. I ran the Detroit water plants, including the one that supplies this neighborhood. And I studied water rates and what is being charged on water rates in Detroit is indefensible, and the water shutoffs are indefensible. Because the other problem with it, and I, I told this to the uh, body, and I told to city council members in 2014 when Governor Snyder started the shutoffs, when you do massive water shutoffs, you risk public health. Because the whole purpose of water treatment systems is to protect the public health. And when you withdraw that from massive numbers of people, you're risking the public health. And the evidence has already shown that to be true. It's, uh, uh, it's a, a horrendous record uh, in terms of what's going on. The tax foreclosures are evicting people from occupied homes, which create more blight. And for the cost of demolishing one home, we could keep several intact and prevent those from going into a blighted condition through the foreclosure process. And I, I believe that uh, County Treasurer Eric Sabri is interested in some different kinds of approaches and solutions. And I think we should be using our hardest hit funds for the purpose that President Obama originally created them for, Pastor Banks, which was to pay, help people with low incomes pay their property taxes so their homes do not go into foreclosure. That diversion to use it strictly for demolition or almost exclusively for demolition and not actively intervene as a uh, right of first refusal to protect those homes and keep them occupied and prevent the blight to grow. That's a mistake and that's a discussion that we need to have in, uh, next year when we're planning the use of those uh, hardest hit funds. Councilman Benson, uh, did you want to rebuttal on that or what? Or <laughs> so, what did so you want to yes, on? number one, I worked very hard with Mayor Duggan to make sure that the Pew Rec Center was repurposed as a recreation center. So you 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 did, you did not label it a surplus. Today. You did not label it. Not label a surplus. In fact, the vote came. It was placed on my committee for a vote in 2014, 
and I sent that back to the uh, administration, we need to rethink that. And that's when the conversation and discussions were had. In fact, Russ and his group were never able to bring an actual plan to the table and requested to do one. They never had one. We did have someone at the table who was willing to buy that, and I made it very clear from the beginning, I was unwilling to continue to have a large recreation center fallow, vacant, and dark in our community. And I was willing to work with those who were bringing back to a proper repurpose, and glad the mayor got involved. I, mean, I had a chance to talk to uh, uh, the, the reporter last night who, had, who, offered, who made that investment in our community, and I thanked him for that that he was able to put Save Detroit, or Save Detroit, and then place Lipke back in, uh, in production, and as a youth model. In addition, when we talk about water rates, and we talk <coughs> about shutoffs, that is something that is not in city council control. So when my opponent talks about what they plan to do about water, they're just naive, or they're misguided, they just don't know. So water shutoffs. Let me finish, let me finish. How city government works. City council does not play a role in that. That is the Water Commission, okay. and as per bankruptcy, since bankruptcy, the federal judge who was placed in control of that has taken city council out of that loop. And so what city council has done is we have hired an attorney so that we can play a role when it comes to water rates being approved and how the water department is run. It is a city department, but we no longer have a dog in that fight, but we're fighting for that. And so those are some of the facts and truths that have to be told and people have to understand. So when someone says, I'm going to do that, they don't have control and the ability to do that. And they, they get misguided and mistaken. In addition, when it comes to foreclosures, that is a county process, not a city of Detroit process. So once again, we don't have a dog in that fight. So when people say, I'm going to go out and do this and stop foreclosures, you don't have that ability. You need to work with the county treasurer, which my office has done. You need to work with the state legislator, which the mayor's office has done, to make sure that we're reducing those interest rates so that when people find themselves two and three years down the line, that they have the ability to go ahead and work a deal with the county treasurer and get their property and stay in their property. It does no good for the city of Detroit to not have people paying their property taxes. The streets being repaved, the sidewalks being repaved, the forestry department that comes out and cuts down tree limbs, when you see our street lights, those are your tax dollars, and we need people paying their property taxes to get those. And so we all strive to make sure that people stay in their homes, and we're working to do that, and we want people paying their property taxes, which is why jobs, for me, has been the primary concern of how we bring the third district back and how we bring the city of Detroit back. So the 1,000 jobs that we've been able to create, the $150 million in development, that is all very important how it impacts all of us in our daily lives and helps improve the quality of life right here in the third district. You, we're here, I'm host Prophet Cedric Banks, along with Detroit City Councilman on my left, Scott Benson, and the challenger, Russ Ballant, for November the 7th election. Mm -hmm. Russ. Uh, I'm going to take issue with much of what uh, the incumbent said because the city council voted in 2014 for a water rate increase of about 8.9 percent and council member voted for that. I did. He, he, and in 2015 there was another water rate increase that was ultimately approved that he voted for. I did. And there was no emergency manager in the case and uh, so this occurred during the, in the immediate post-bankruptcy period. Um, the, city, the city council has the means to make decisions on these matters. And I've heard the excuse for two years that we've hired an attorney, and we're looking at that. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get into a debate with him on that. It, the city council it's is the legislative body. I, I won't interrupt you, and you don't interrupt me. We Hardly got a deal. Facts. We got a deal. Hardly debate the facts. Are you going to continue? Gonna continue, please. Hardly the, debate the facts. No, you said continue, and you can debate the listen. facts. Please I'm, continue. No, let's let him. Let's let him. Let's let him continue. Okay, counselor. Let's let him continue. I'm sorry, but it's hard to debate the facts. Right, right. Let's go on. Continue. I'm not asking for for your permission. I'm asking you to refrain from interrupting. Mr. Bolan, here's the fact. Here's the facts. Continue. You don't, I'm not asking for your permission. I'm giving because you. If, if, we go, if we go by your practices, let me be clear. If we go by the practices of shutting off water on a massive scale. And those are not my practices. Excuse me. Let's let him continue, Councilman. I just need him to state the facts. Please just state facts. Let's let him continue. 
Please just take the facts for us and continue, please. All right, I'm going to I'm going to talk about his claims about the Lipke Recreation Center. If you want the facts, you can look at the city council record and mm -hmm. find out that he voted to, to declare Lipke surplus property that he campaigned for it. And when the chairman of a committee said, "Mr. Benson has how made can they, this case," how can they see this uh, in, in the, candidate in, in the uh, city council? City, the city clerk maintains the archives of the city council uh, records in the minutes, and it'll be found in the minutes, okay. that vote. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 2014 was the year. And so, um, you know, and we had uh, meetings after meetings and rallies in the Lipke community to stop the closing. He was on the other side consistently against us. He led the campaign effort. He, absolutely did lead it and you know uh, your continuing interruption it, it just goes to your defensiveness about it but I'm going to tell you yeah, that well, that's the like way the facts being stated uh, it, am I going to conduct myself like where every time I make a statement he has a privilege of interrupting me councilman let's let him finish Prophet, it's your show okay let's let him finish because right. we don't come to you yes, sir. and we want to give we go give you that same respect okay okay Okay. You know, I guess what we really have here is whose word are you going to trust? Because I, in my experience, and one of the reasons I'm running is because we've had a history of not being able to trust what we're being told from our city council rep. And so if you want to want to go there, I'll go there because uh, uh, Thursday, a week ago Thursday, uh, the council rep was talking about the drag racing at the airport mm -hmm. and he said uh, uh, Cara uh, a group in south uh, in the down by the airport what supported is what is Cara? the city airport uh, renaissance uh, association excuse yes. me please continue where do you get the arrogance to talk to people and interrupt them continuously why do you That's have that arrogance, arrogance because for us we just want to make sure no, we're stating no. the facts here uh, if you you, i'll tell you what Councilman, Councilman, let's let him finish. Okay, let's let him finish. Okay. Anybody who was at the Mohican Regent meeting uh, on uh, the third Thursday of last month, September, mm -hmm. heard the council members say that uh, a community group supported the drag racing down there. Mm -hmm. And Was that President Preston's event? Correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. And he stated that repeatedly and emphatically, and he said mm -hmm. that they supported the, the th three drag racing. In fact, they want to have drag racing down there on an ongoing basis. What um, I did is I checked with them because I didn't believe those statements to be true. And in mm -hmm. fact, they told me emphatically, and they also authorized me to say this and quote them on this, that anyone who says that they support drag racing in their area is telling a lie. Okay. And so that's what they said. So that's what and I told and you. So when I, what, 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 Let's quote them, please. The pre, the, um, <laughs> I will speak my piece. And you please do. We're seat. helping you. No, do you're not. That. No, you're not please doing do. that, Mr. Benson. Please do. Just, well, what I want no, to no, sure I don't want you to keep talking. Okay. Being stated, right? you Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Councilman, hold on. Councilman, hold on. Councilman, Councilman, let's let him finish, Councilman. Let's let him yeah. finish, because your turn is getting ready to be next. Okay. All right. Let's yeah. let him be. Let's let I, him I've finish. I've had so little time to cover anything because of these interruptions. But let me be clear: the president of CARA, which is Stan, who? hold it. Let me talk. The pres, uh, the head of the Georgia Street Community Collective, was Mark Covington. Mm -hmm. Both said that those statements were false. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's just the way it is. And I was saying, you say I, Mark Covington? Yes. Mark and Covington. I, I stood. Georgia I Street, stood up. Georgia, sure. I stood up in the room and was recognized by the chair to report and uh, quote the gentleman that I just named. And at that point, the council incumbent got up and walked out of the room at a high speed, paced right out of the room. And by the time that's the, a bit of a miss, a uh, miss uh, uh, context there, but it's come now. Left and, quickly, well, left quickly. I well, walked out yeah, because we yeah, had because other places we had to go. That's fine. That's fine. So, but please it was just don't characterize it as I walked as, out quickly as if I was yeah. running. That is not the case, and please. We, what we've had in District 3 is a council person who's not uh, addressed the water shutoff, not addressed the tax foreclosures, not addressed, not addressed the policies that are leading to those things. And what I bring with my experience in water systems is 
a diligence on water issues, which is the most essential issue for public health. Mm -hmm. Look at Flint as an example. I was a speaker up at the, a two-day conference in Flint because of my background on water and what public health. That? Yesterday. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. And um, I and I, I, I uh, I'm you're, you're doing continuous rebuttal, so please. Um, so the issue, the, the, again, the whole history, when we built the water, started the modern water system in Detroit with the launch of Waterworks Park in 1921, we had thousands of people dying in Detroit every year. And when we put in the rapid sand filters in a new plant in 1921, the, the death rate plummeted. When we added chlorine a few years later, we zeroed it out. And what we're seeing now with 101,000 water shutoffs, punitive water shutoffs that have been done in the last four years, started by Governor Rick Snyder, uh, we're seeing a return to the health conditions. And based, health on what, problems. based on uh, what? Uh, based on what? Do you have any facts you, whatsoever uh, to say there's a health problem based on water shutoff? If you could be you have any if facts you would be whatsoever. Quiet. That um, is a very dangerous thing to say. So uh, please substantiate just, that just, claim. Um, if and you then, were paying it, what you're saying is you're not aware of the facts, so let me educate you too. No, no, no. I'll educate you too. your facts. Please uh, substantiate I'll, them. I'm going to educate you. Henry no, please, Ford please House. Please substantiate them. Henry, Henry Ford has since walked away from that. That is not science. Henry Ford has since walked away from that. Why don't you just be quiet and let me finish, okay? okay. Mr. Ballant, why don't you state the quiet, facts? Please state the facts. Do you think somebody's trying to prevent me from stating the facts? No, I'm correcting Do you think somebody, you're facts. not correcting anything Please. because I haven't and said it? When will I be able to cancer it? Let's, 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 let's let him let 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 Russ, Candidate Russ, let's let him come in. Let's no, let, let me him. state my facts on this. Let's, let's let, 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 let me state my facts on the health. But these, these, oh my goodness. No, no, you don't know what you're talking about. Henry Ford No, I do know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Henry Ford <laughs> Health System did a study that they released in February 27th. Which they have since walked back from. And Go ahead. It, let me let me say this right now. Let, oh, oh, no, no, let me no, say let report. me say this. I need to I need to come in for time's sake. Okay. You look at you're watching the community shall be restored. I'm your host, uh, Pastor Cedric Banks. On my left is Detroit City Councilman Scott Benson of the yes. Third District. Yes, the challenger Russ Ballant of the yes. Third so District. Let's and I'm gonna tell you Henry let's Ford Hospital did a study. Let's talk Hold about on. Henry Ford. No, study, no. Henry Ford Hospital Henry Ford. did a study in 2017. They released it in February 2017. They studied 37,000 patients. And here's what they found. On every block where a water shutoff occurred, the risk of communicable disease went up by a factor of one and one half times. Now, here's what happened. Uh, okay. they're, they're, we the, city, the city got in, in a contentious debate, but they never denied the facts of their study. They quit promoting it at the request of they the city. No, they quit promoting it, but the they did not. Re at the request, no, they knew no. that it was bad and science. The second and thing, Henry Ford the second, does Michigan, not do that. Sec was not Michigan Department. Hold it. You stop. Michigan Department of Public Health has just announced a spike in Legionnaire's disease, which is a waterborne disease, mm -hmm. in Flint. In Flint, Hold, we're talking it. Detroit. Please come back to Detroit. Don't scare people with Flint. Flint is a completely no, separate I'm animal. I'm saying the and Michigan so Department of Public Health has announced a spike in a deadly disease and water. Russ, we Russ, have Russ, to be Russ, 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 Hold, hold it, hold it, time out. No. You can't substantiate them. Time out, time out. Profit, I am, can't say I'm getting upset, time out now. Let's give, let's give the, the councilman a, a little time so, now. I'm gonna come right back to you, Russ. Fair enough. I'm, gonna come, I'm coming enough. right back. Fair enough. I knew this would go like this, I knew it. I have to come back from fantasy land to reality. <laughs> so clearly, water has been addressed by my office, and I have been very forefront and willing to take on that heavy fight. So, yes, my office did vote twice to increase the water rates. And so it's also fantasy land to think that you are going to be an elected official, someone who is responsible for the purse of the city of Detroit, and make your own decisions that do not comport with the law. So we can vote no on water rate increases, but that will trigger the state coming back in, a place which my opponent worked. That triggers the state coming back in. As for the bankruptcy, we have to ensure that we are living within our means. And that means if it requires an increase in water rates to make sure we're able to deliver safe, healthy water to you, then we're going to, be, we're going to need to do that. What it also means is that the city of Detroit, the legislative body, has been taken out of that process. 
which is why we have hired an attorney. And it wasn't two years ago. This is not an excuse. This is reality. Reality and facts matter, especially when it comes to your health. And I, for one, know that water is expensive and it is not for debate. We have to provide good, healthy, clean water. So this past week in the city of Philadelphia, they have very similar issues that we have here in Detroit. They are another large city that also has a large component of poverty in that city. And so they've seen people unable to afford their water as well and having to make very tough and difficult choices. So I sat down with Councilwoman Quinones Sanchez's office and we talked about how they are Councilwoman able to now Sa who is, who Maria is she? Quinones Sanchez. She? she is a Councilwoman in the city of Philadelphia. Oh, so they okay. just implemented okay. an affordable water ordinance where they provide water at $12 a month minimum. If you are at 150% of poverty or below, you can qualify for a $12 a month water rate. And so we're trying to bring that here. So I sat down with them. I brought in the water director, Gary Brown. We've had the phone conference and we're moving forward with that. And they also said, and I was surprised to hear this, that the city of Detroit is on the cutting edge in one of its solutions to the water problem. And that's the fact that we get rid of the arrearages that people have. So if you owe $1,000 in backwater bills, the city, through its program, will let you get let's let you go through that. We're going to let, so, we only got three minutes left. We got to hear from Russ. Well, We're going to come right back to you. 25 minutes to no. tell all these missed facts. Can I just one, one more time <laughs> state about the uh, foreclosure? So the foreclosure is not a city council issue. That is a county treasurer issue. In addition, schools, that's a state issue. My office fought hard to make sure that when they wanted to come in and shut down six schools, additionally in the third district, that we had our town hall at, um, at Pershing. We worked with the state senators. We had state rep. We had the EAA chancellor there. We had the school district superintendent at the time. And yep. we had two school board members who came to talk oh, about that to make sure that the river. state knew yep. that we yep. were not going to allow for them to come in and yep. shut down schools yep. and put up empty hulks in our city and our district. Which on. we so, already have. Which is done by the state. Councilman, hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That you did nothing about when you were there. So let's be very clear. Okay. Yes. What on the on the school closings? I was the person who organized the citywide rally at the request of 300 people to organize a city rally outside of Governor Snyder's office, saying, "Do not close any Detroit public schools." He had 25 on the list. You organized and, that, and rally. I organized the rally. Okay. I led the rally. I believe and, I remember that. Okay. And I. Um, have been involved with the Detroit Public Schools since the first John Engler takeover in 1999. I've written a history of the destruction under emergency management of our schools, mm -hmm. and I testified at least 50 times in Lansing in 2010, 2011, and 2012, and on behalf of our school district. And so, city council so did that's, not play that, a role in that. Well, you Let's brought the school district. You, you brought, brought the school, the school district up. up. We have you, advocacy. That's our platform stop for schools. Stop interrupting. The state M is the Mr. Benson the wants to that. dominate the air so that no, he, Mr. he will not to allow. Sure that the Facts no, come out, no, and you, my opponent does not play on. in the you, world of facts. So I, I have I to make do, sure that facts are being stated, you, which is why I'm listen, here today. Which is why we Benson have to engage is taking in this over the show and not allowing me to speak because he doesn't want people to know the truth. He calls them lies. Okay, well, no. But Number one, not time, time out, the truth. Time, the time out, y'all. I gotta close the show out. We out of time. Okay, okay, I'm out of time. I can't stand a liar. And I okay. told you to your face you're a liar, and okay. you are a liar. Russ, Mr. Russ, I'm, I'm, I'm that's what we call it. We're closing it out. You're allowed to run over, over me every time. I'm I your host. I've been your host, Prophet Senator Banks. Call. See call you call your next call Sunday. Day. I mean, next Saturday that's night. Horrible. Comcast 90 right here at 8 p.m. on Comcast 90. I've been your host, Prophet Senator Banks. My goodness.